After hearing their dog bark at the drain for the last few days, Fred and Debbie decided to see what all the fuss was about. Their dog, Zoe, had never shown so much interest in a drain before, so they knew something had to be down there. They simply expected it to be a toy of some sort, but as they got closer, they were in for a surprise, a sound they never expected to hear. They both turned pale when they finally realized why Zoe was barking at the drain. With trembling hands, Deborah called 911. I need the police! Debbie almost yelled through the phone. She sounded hysterical, so Fred tried to calm her down. We have time, we have time, he repeatedly told her, even though he himself didn't believe a word he said. Guilt crept in, making him regret not checking the drain sooner. When Debbie hung up the phone, she had tears in her eyes. Are we too late? We have to do something, Debbie urged after 15 minutes had passed, but there was still no sign of the police. Fred grunted, unsure of what to do. A very heavy cabinet covered a piece of the drain, which he could never lift up alone. Suddenly, he jumped up and ran down the stairs. Debbie could hear him run into the garden, so she looked out the window. Fred ran into the shed, came out holding a crowbar, and ran back to Debbie. He ordered her to step aside and pushed the crowbar underneath the cabinet to try prying it up. Debbie saw an opportunity and grabbed the drain cover, quickly pulling it aside. Finally, she had a clear sight of whatever was inside the drain, and she couldn't believe her eyes. But why was Zoe so interested in the drain? And what was inside? Debbie and Fred had just moved into their new home when Zoe began to act differently. Every time she would enter the master bathroom, she would act nervous and sniff almost every corner of the room. Debbie initially thought it was just silly old Zoe having trouble adjusting to her new home, but it was actually something way more serious. After about two days of unnecessary sniffing, Zoe stopped at a drain in the bathroom and began to bark. Zoe, stop! Debbie irritatedly said. Zoe had startled her while putting on eyeliner, causing her to almost poke out her eye. But Zoe didn't stop. Her barking only intensified. Frustrated, Debbie left the room to finish her makeup in another mirror, unknowingly leaving Zoe behind in distress. What's the barking about? Fred asked as he walked into their bedroom where Debbie was finishing her makeup. Debbie shook her head and sighed. I have no idea, she said as she did her finishing touches. She has been acting strange lately, hasn't she? Fred brought up, making Debbie pause. Do you think there's something wrong with her? She worriedly asked. Fred shrugged and walked into the bathroom, where Zoe was still barking at the drain. Debbie finished her look off with some lipstick, and just as she was about to put everything away, Fred yelled at her to come immediately. Debbie's stomach dropped, thinking there was something wrong with Zoe, who had stopped barking right at that time. When she ran into the bathroom, she saw Fred sitting on his knees near the drain, hovering his head right above it. What's go? Debbie began, but Fred interrupted her. Shush, he hissed, wanting the room to be completely silent. Debbie could hear her heart racing in her chest as she eagerly waited for Fred to explain himself. Then, she suddenly heard something. It felt like all their air was being sucked out of her in a split second, and she almost fell to her knees. Is that what I think it is? She whispered as she crawled closer to the drain. Fred looked at her with sad eyes. I have no idea. I can't see inside as it's too dark, he muttered. But it was clear that he was very worried. We have to call someone, Debbie desperately said as she scrambled to her feet and ran out of the room to get her phone. But when she returned, she hesitated. Who do we call though? She asked as her eyes met Fred's. They stood in silence for a second, both unsure of what to do next. I can't just stand around and do nothing, Debbie eventually said, and she dialed 911. Debbie dialed 911 with shaky hands, each ring making her heart pound louder. Hello? I need help, she stammered, her voice quivering. We're hearing something strange from the bathroom drain. Fred stood beside her, one hand on her shoulder. What kind of sound? the operator asked calmly. Debbie struggled to explain. I... I don't know, but it's not normal. She quickly rattled off their address, glancing at Fred with worried eyes, seeking reassurance. 
please hurry, she pleaded. The dispatcher listened, but her tone was dismissive. A noise, ma'am? She questioned skeptically. Debbie's heart sank as she repeated herself. Yes, a noise, she insisted, frustration creeping into her voice. Please send someone. After an uncomfortable pause, the dispatcher finally said, An officer will be there soon. Debbie hung up and looked at Fred, her face pale. They don't believe us, do they? Fred shook his head slowly, worry etched across his brow. Fred rubbed his temples. We can't wait around, he muttered, pacing the room. What do we do? Debbie asked, her voice taut with urgency. There's something down there, and we need to find out what it is. Fred stopped pacing and faced her. I think I can move that cabinet, he said, but I'll need something to pry it open with. Debbie nodded firmly. Go to the shed, she urged. We can't waste any more time. Fred sprinted out to the backyard shed, fumbling with the latch in his rush. He yanked the door open and rifled through the clutter until he found an old, rusting crowbar leaning against the wall. Got it, he muttered to himself, and he darted back to the house. Inside, Debbie stood at the bathroom door, her fingers nervously tapping against the frame. Fred held up the crowbar, and she nodded approvingly. Let's see what's under there, she said. He knelt beside the drain, studying the heavy cabinet that blocked it. I need to wedge this under, he muttered to himself, positioning the crowbar carefully. Ready? he asked Debbie, who nodded with wide eyes. He wedged the tool under the cabinet, bracing himself against the floor as he strained to lift it. He could feel his muscles tense as he slowly started to pry the cabinet upwards. Fred wedged the crowbar under the cabinet, positioning his body for leverage. With a grunt, he strained against the weight, muscles tensing as the cabinet began to shift. It's moving, he called, sweat beating on his forehead. Debbie hovered nearby, her fingers twitching with nervous energy. Keep going, she urged, her eyes fixed on the gap slowly widening beneath the cabinet. Inch by inch, Fred pried it upward, revealing the obscured drain cover beneath. As Fred lifted the cabinet, Debbie knelt and yanked the drain cover free, casting it aside. They exchanged tense glances before both peered into the dark hole, barely able to make out its contents. There it is, Debbie muttered, craning her neck to see better. We need a light. Fred reached for his phone and flicked on the flashlight, illuminating the damp, shadowy interior of the drain. Zoe whined softly behind them, tail wagging anxiously. Fred shone his phone's flashlight into the drain while Debbie leaned in closer. The faint beam revealed damp, glistening walls and a dark abyss below. Do you see anything? Fred asked, his voice tight. Debbie shook her head, her fingers clutching the drain's edge. I can't tell. But I think there's something down there, she whispered, her heart racing. Their worst fears seemed to materialise as eerie echoes emanated from the drain, amplifying their unease. Without a second thought, Debbie stretched her arm down the drain, her fingers searching for something solid to grasp. It's deeper than I thought, she muttered, her arm disappearing into the shadows. Fred held the flashlight steady, illuminating her determined expression. Can you feel anything? he asked urgently. No. I think it's further down, Debbie replied, straining to reach. She bit her lip in frustration, her fingers clawing the air as she struggled to touch something. Fred glanced at his watch, noting how long had passed since they first called 911. Deb, we're running out of time, he warned, worry etched on his face. We have to figure this out before... His words faltered as Debbie took a deep breath, stretching her arm further into the drain. The urgency mounted as she struggled, her breaths quick and sharp. I almost have it, she muttered. They both knew every second mattered, their anxiety rising. Debbie gasped as she realised her arm was stuck. Fred, I can't move it, she exclaimed, her voice rising. Fred quickly knelt beside her, trying to reassure her. Stay calm, Deb, he said, gripping her shoulder firmly. We'll get you out. She winced as she tried to pull her arm free, but each attempt only brought pain. It's not budging 
she muttered through gritted teeth, panic rising in her chest. Fred's eyes darted, searching for a solution. Fred tugged gently at Debbie's arm, his brow furrowed as she winced with each attempt. I'm sorry, Deb. I don't want to hurt you, he said, his face twisted in concern. She bit her lip, her breath quickening with each pull. It's no use, she said softly, the frustration clear in her voice. I can't get loose. Fred leaned back, his mind racing. We need to think of something else. Stay still for a second. An idea sparked in Fred's mind. Hold on, I'll be right back, he muttered, darting out of the bathroom. He sprinted to the kitchen, rummaging through the cupboards until he found a bottle of olive oil. Perfect, he said under his breath, and he raced back upstairs. Got it, he exclaimed as he entered the bathroom. This should help your arm slip out more easily. Debbie looked up hopefully, her forehead glistening with sweat. Do it. Fred knelt beside Debbie and carefully drizzled the oil around her trapped arm. Let's try this, he said softly, his voice steady. He massaged the oil gently around her elbow, working to ease her arm free without causing more pain. Debbie gripped the edge of the drain, her knuckles white. I think it's working, she whispered as she felt her arm loosen. Fred nodded and continued, careful to avoid any sharp pulls. Almost there, he murmured encouragingly. With a final tug, Fred pulled Debbie's arm free, and she slumped back with a sigh of relief. Thank you, she muttered, rubbing her sore elbow, but their relief was fleeting as they remembered the object still trapped below. What now? Debbie asked quietly, staring at the dark drain. Fred stood up, brushing off his hands. We've got to figure out what's down there, he said firmly. They both knew their work wasn't done just yet. With Debbie's arm now free, they sat beside the drain, contemplating their next move. The mysterious object still lurked below, its dark shape faintly visible in the dim light. Fred ran his fingers through his hair. How are we going to get that out? He wondered aloud. Debbie bit her lip, still shaken from her ordeal. We need help, she said, her voice steadier now. We can't do this alone. We have to call in someone. Debbie stood up, a glint of determination in her eyes. Let's call the fire department, she suggested, glancing back at the drain. They have better equipment for this kind of thing. Fred nodded, though doubt still clouded his face. I hope they can help, he muttered. Just as Debbie reached for her phone, she heard sirens wailing nearby. The police, she exclaimed. Fred jumped up, his eyes brightening with unexpected relief. Looks like our backup has arrived. The police sirens grew louder, echoing through the neighborhood. Relief mixed with anxiety as Fred and Debbie waited by the window, watching for the officer's arrival. Do you think they'll be able to help us? Debbie asked, her fingers gripping the curtains tightly. I hope so, Fred said, glancing nervously back at the bathroom. They've got to. As the police car pulled up outside, they both hurried downstairs, hearts racing, to meet the officers at the door. Fred opened the front door to greet the two officers. Thank you for coming, he said hurriedly. We've got a situation upstairs. The officers exchanged glances, their brows furrowed. What kind of situation? One of them asked. There's something in the drain, Fred explained, gesturing frantically. We heard a noise, but we can't reach it. He spoke quickly urgency in his voice. Can you come up and take a look? The officers nodded, following Fred inside. Fred led the officers up the stairs to the bathroom, their expressions growing more serious as they approached the drain. Debbie stood to the side, her fingers still trembling slightly. Here, Fred said, pointing at the open drain. The officers peered in cautiously, shining their flashlights down into the darkness. They exchanged grave looks, whispering quietly between themselves. We're going to need more equipment, one finally said, rising to his feet. Let's call for backup. The officers' faces grew grim as they looked down into the drain. We need better equipment for this, one muttered, pulling out his radio. Dispatch, we're going to need the fire department here ASAP, he said into the receiver. There's an unknown object down the drain, possibly human. The other officer knelt beside the drain, shining his flashlight deeper. I can't see much, 
he said to Fred and Debbie, shaking his head. We'll wait for the fire team. Debbie sat on the edge of the bathtub, dabbing her arm with a towel to remove the olive oil. She felt her nerves fray with each passing minute. How long do you think it'll be? She asked Fred, her eyes flicking to the door. I don't know, Fred replied, pacing anxiously. He shot a look at the officers by the drain. Shouldn't they be here by now? Debbie asked quietly. The officers stayed quiet, listening for the sirens. The officers stood by the drain, whispering quietly. This isn't going to be simple, one said, shaking his head. No, replied the other, his gaze steady on the bathroom floor. But we have to try. They grew silent as they watched Fred and Debbie's worried faces. Let's just keep everyone calm, one officer said. We need to be ready for when backup arrives. They crossed their arms, eyes darting between the drain and the door, on guard. Fred and Debbie exchanged tense glances, their cosy bathroom now transformed into an impromptu emergency scene. I never thought our new home would be like this, Fred muttered, rubbing his forehead. Neither did I, Debbie whispered. Zoe paced outside the bathroom, her nails clicking nervously on the tiles. Should we do anything? Debbie asked softly. Fred shook his head. Let's just stay out of their way, he said, his voice tinged with worry. They'll handle this. The silence stretched between them, each moment more tense than the last. Faint sounds from the drain grew weaker, replaced by eerie quiet. Debbie leaned against the sink, eyes closed as she listened intently. Do you still hear it? Fred asked, his voice barely a whisper. Debbie shook her head, her lips pursed tightly. The officers stood motionless, exchanging concerned glances. I hope the fire department gets here soon, Fred muttered, his fingers tapping nervously against the tiles. The muffled cries below sounded like a newborn's wails, but Debbie knew better. Her maternal instincts kicked in, her breath catching in her throat. It's not a baby, right? She whispered, voice trembling. Fred looked at her with wide eyes, uncertain. I don't know, he admitted, rubbing the back of his neck. We can't see anything yet. Debbie's eyes never left the drain, her hands clutching the sink's edge as she strained to listen closer. Debbie held back tears as she tried to convince herself the noise was anything but what she feared most. Maybe it's just an animal, she muttered, almost to herself. Like a raccoon or something. Fred placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. We'll know soon, he said softly. The officers kept their distance, whispering quietly amongst themselves. Debbie took a deep breath, blinking rapidly to steady herself. We're going to find out what's down there, she murmured. Every minute felt like an hour as they waited, each tick of the clock heavy in the room. Fred paced in and out of the bathroom, glancing at his watch every few seconds. Debbie stood by the sink, one hand nervously tapping the counter. Where are they? she muttered. Fred shook his head. They'll be here, he said firmly, though doubt gnawed at his mind. The officers stood guard, listening for any sign of the approaching sirens. The air was thick with urgency, the unknown creature's plight looming heavily over them. Debbie rubbed her forehead, her brow furrowed. It's so quiet now, she said softly, glancing at the drain. I hope it's okay. Fred stood beside her, his arms crossed tightly. It will be, he assured her, though his voice lacked confidence. The officers watched the couple, their faces set in grim determination. The tension grew as they awaited help, breaths held in suspense. The fire department arrived with grim faces, the severity of the situation reflected in their eyes. Where's the bathroom? asked the captain, his gaze sweeping across Fred and Debbie. Upstairs, Fred said quickly, gesturing urgently. The captain nodded and motioned for his team to follow him up the stairs. Fred's nerves tightened as he noticed the solemn expressions on the firefighters' faces. Stay close, Deb, he muttered quietly, standing protectively beside her as they waited for instructions. The captain turned to Debbie and Fred before entering the bathroom. I need you both to stay back, he said firmly, for your safety. Debbie's breath hitched, but she nodded, stepping back reluctantly. Do you think everything will be okay? 
she asked, wringing her hands nervously. We'll do everything we can, the captain assured her, adjusting his helmet. Fred placed an arm around her shoulders. Come on, he whispered, leading her to the hallway to wait. Overwhelmed by the moment, Debbie leaned against the wall and broke down, tears streaming freely. I can't do this, she sobbed, her voice trembling. What if it's... Her words trailed off as Fred hugged her tightly. Shh, he whispered soothingly. We don't know anything yet. Let's just wait and see. The officers exchanged glances, unsure how to offer comfort. We'll know soon, one finally said softly. Debbie wiped her cheeks, staring at the bathroom door anxiously. Debbie sobbed outside, her fears becoming more real by the second. I can't handle this, she muttered through clenched teeth. Fred stood by her, his hand rubbing her back in slow circles. We'll get through it, he said softly, though his voice wavered with doubt. Whatever happens, we're in this together. Debbie's breaths came in shallow gasps as she wiped her eyes. The uncertainty gnawed at her, but she clung to Fred's arm, trying to steady herself. Inside, Fred and Debbie clung to each other, listening to the sounds echoing ominously from the bathroom. The firefighters' voices were low but firm, the clanging of their tools reverberating down the hallway. I can't hear anything but them, Fred muttered. Debbie squeezed his arm tightly, her knuckles white. Maybe that's good, she whispered, though her voice wavered with uncertainty. They both remained tense, leaning against the wall as the firefighters continued their work. Firefighters shuffled by periodically, their boots thudding against the tiles, tools clanging as they passed. Debbie jumped with each sound, her nerves frayed. What are they doing? She whispered. Fred glanced at the bathroom door, straining to listen. I don't know, he muttered but they've got it under control. The air was thick with tension as the firefighters worked, their voices drifting down the hallway. Each clang and shuffle seemed to echo through the house. Fred and Debbie listened intently to the noises from the bathroom, every clang and scrape a potential sign of what lay below. Do you think they found it? Debbie whispered, her breath hitching. I can't tell, Fred replied, his jaw clenched. The firefighters' voices seemed to blur together, words becoming indistinct. Debbie's ears strained to pick out anything useful, her anxiety rising with every passing second. We'll know soon, Fred reassured her, squeezing her hand gently. Anxiety peaked as Fred and Debbie stood by, the minutes dragging on like hours. They feared not only what might be in the drain, but for themselves as well. What if we never find out? Debbie muttered, shaking her head. We will, Fred assured her, though his voice lacked confidence. I'm sure of it. The air felt heavy with uncertainty, each clang of tools or murmur of voices making their hearts race. They exchanged nervous glances. A police officer approached Fred and Debbie gently, holding a small bundle wrapped tightly in a blanket. His steps were measured, his gaze soft and steady. Ma'am, sir, he said quietly, nodding to each of them. We found something. He cradled the bundle in his arms carefully as Fred and Debbie stared, frozen in place. The officer's expression remained calm, though there was a solemn undertone in his eyes. You'll want to see this, he said softly. Debbie's heart raced as she braced herself, staring at the blanket in the officer's arms. His face was unreadable and she couldn't tell whether to expect the worst. What is it? she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The officer glanced at Fred, then back at Debbie. I think you should look, he said, not giving anything away. Fred squeezed Debbie's shoulder gently, and she took a deep breath, trying to steady herself before stepping forward. The officer urged Debbie to look inside the blanket, his calm assurance peculiar in such a somber moment. It's okay, he said softly. Go ahead. Debbie hesitated, her fingers trembling as she reached out toward the bundle. Fred stood close by, a reassuring presence. We're here, Deb, he murmured. The officer shifted the blanket slightly, just enough to give Debbie a glimpse inside. Take a deep breath, he said gently, his voice firm but warm. 
tension hung in the air as Debbie reached out trembling hands to uncover the mystery inside the blanket. She glanced at Fred, who nodded silently. With great care, she peeled back the fabric inch by inch, revealing a tiny shape within. Her breath hitched as she paused, her eyes scanning the bundle. What is it? she asked in a whisper. The officer stood still, watching intently. You can see for yourself, he said softly, his tone encouraging. The officer watched Debbie closely, a slight knowing smile forming as she hesitated. Go on, he urged gently. Debbie took another deep breath, her fingers hovering above the blanket's edge. Fred placed a steadying hand on her back. It's okay, he said softly. Debbie nodded, lifting the fabric just a bit more. What do you see? the officer asked. Debbie leaned closer, her gaze locked on the small form inside. I... I don't know, she stammered. The blanket revealed what looked like a newborn, lifeless and still. Debbie gasped, her face pale as she stared down at the small form. Oh my God, she whispered, her hand covering her mouth. Fred leaned in, peering over her shoulder. Is it? he asked, his voice trailing off in shock. The officer remained calm, one hand resting gently on Debbie's arm. Take a moment, he said softly, but there's something you need to know. The officer quickly explained that the baby was actually a motion sensor doll used for training purposes. It's designed to cry when moved or touched, he said, pointing to the small sensor near its neck. Whoever put it down there must have wanted to cause a scare. Debbie blinked in disbelief, her heart racing. You mean, this isn't real? She stammered. The officer shook his head. It's a false alarm, he confirmed, offering a reassuring smile. Relief and confusion washed over Debbie and Fred as they stared at the lifeless doll. This is ridiculous, Fred muttered, shaking his head. We called the police for a toy? Debbie couldn't help but chuckle nervously, her shoulders sagging in exhaustion. I can't believe it, she said softly. The officer gave them both an understanding nod. You did the right thing calling us, he assured them. Better safe than sorry in situations like this. Laughter mixed with sobs as the emotional roller coaster of the night finally began to unwind. What a night, Fred chuckled, rubbing his eyes. Debbie wiped away the tears streaming down her cheeks. We should have checked the drain sooner, she muttered, shaking her head. The officer gave them both a sympathetic smile. Sometimes things aren't what they seem, he said gently. At least now you know for sure. They both nodded, relief slowly settling in. The police and firefighters began to clear out, taking the bizarre cause of their fright with them. Fred and Debbie stood in the hallway, their shoulders slumped in exhaustion. Looks like we'll be able to sleep tonight, Fred said with a small grin. Debbie chuckled and nodded. Yeah, finally, she agreed. The officer waved goodbye as he closed the door behind him, leaving Fred and Debbie alone in the dimly lit house. Zoe trotted up, tail wagging. Alone at last, Debbie and Fred burst into laughter, the tension breaking like a popped balloon. We were scared half to death over a doll. Fred gasped, holding his sides. Debbie leaned against the wall, her laughter echoing down the empty hallway. We must have looked so ridiculous, she chuckled. I can't believe it. They both laughed until tears streamed down their faces, the night's weight finally lifting. Zoe wagged her tail, barking in cheerful confusion. Once their laughter subsided, Debbie and Fred walked into the bathroom only to find the place in disarray. The heavy cabinet sat awkwardly to one side, the floor slick with olive oil and muddy footprints from the firefighters. Well, that's a mess, Fred muttered, eyeing the damage. Debbie grabbed a towel and began wiping up the oil. We'll need to clean this up tomorrow, she said. Definitely, Fred nodded, rolling up his sleeves to join her. As they tidied up, the ridiculousness of the situation dawned on them fully. They laughed at the overturned cabinet, the scattered tools, and the drain cover lying askew on the tiles. We really went through all this because of a toy, Debbie marveled, shaking her head. Who'd have thought 
Fred chuckled, stacking tools on the counter. I guess we're safe now, right? He asked playfully. Right, Debbie replied, squeezing his arm with a grin. No more surprises. Plans to renovate the bathroom suddenly seemed fortuitous, considering the chaos it had just endured. Well, at least we know what needs fixing, Fred said, eyeing the crooked cabinet. And a new drain cover, Debbie added with a smirk. Let's make this place feel like home. Fred nodded, his smile growing wider. Absolutely. No more doll scares, he chuckled. They both laughed softly, ready to put the strange night behind them and start fresh. The couple embraced, relieved and exhausted, ready to move past the night's eerie adventure. Fred held Debbie close, rubbing her back in slow, soothing circles. We're going to be okay, he whispered. Debbie leaned into him, her eyes closed. We are, she agreed softly. They stood in the dim bathroom, feeling the last remnants of tension slip away. Let's get some sleep, Fred suggested gently. Tomorrow's a new day. Debbie nodded, squeezing his hand as they left. 